The term kamikaze has become synonymous with fanaticism. However, the term was coined by Japanese translators in the service of the American army. The Japanese themselves called it differently. Shinpu Takabetsu Kogeki Tax, which is approximately translated as Divine Wind Special Attack Units, abbreviated in Japanese as Shinpu. In English transcription, according to Chinese-derived pronunciation, it turned out to be kamikaze, usually translated as Divine Wind. The Japanese also called the Divine Wind two typhoons that occurred in 1278 and 1281, right on the days of the landing of the troops of the Mongol Khan and at the same time Chinese Emperor, Kublai, with the aim of capturing Japan. Hurricane winds both times scattered the fleet with the landing of the Mongol Chinese army, which then saved Japan from foreign invasion. This name was taken by the organizer of the kamikaze detachments, Vice Admiral Takijiro Onishi, commander of the 1st Air Fleet. I don't think there is any other way to accomplish the task facing us other than to bring down an airplane armed with a 250 kg bomb on the ship, Onishi said at meetings of the Japanese command. Japan was losing the US naval race because it could not compete with the US neither in the number of ships launched each month nor in the quantity and quality of aircraft produced. Therefore, Admiral Anisha's idea found support among the Japanese leaders. In 1944, in Japan, a campaign was launched to enroll volunteers in detachments of Shimpo pilots. However, the command of the Japanese army did not want to sacrifice experienced aviators. Therefore, professional pilots were rare among kamikazes. They recruited mainly young pilots or infantrymen aged 17 to 20 years. These young men were hastily taught the simplest skills of flying an airplane and sent on missions, which was usually a one-way trip. Young people were seduced by heroism and posthumous inclusion in the rank of samurai, something that was unacceptable to any Japanese person during their lifetime. The family of the deceased hero received benefits and increased their social status. In Japan, the philosophy of duty and self-sacrifice for the sake of the emperor and the nation, the so-called cult of Giri was cultivated. With an advent of, in fact, a new branch of the military, its own ritual appeared. In Asia, rituals have always played an important role, and especially in Japan. Volunteers who signed up for the kamikaze were provided with good food. They were trained by the best instructors, aces in their field. Within one and a half to two months, young suicide bombers had to master the basics of taking off and landing an aircraft and maneuvering in order to correctly direct the flying machine towards the target. Since there were no plans to engage in air combat, training was kept to a minimum. The names of Shimpu thundered throughout the country. Women embroidered a Seninbari belt for them, a belt of thousand stitches. In such a belt, a thousand women had to make a stitch each of them. The Seninbari were considered a mascot by kamikaze. Suicide pilots tied a hachimaki on their heads, a special headband made of white fabric with an image of the sun and hieroglyphs glorifying Japan and the emperor. Before the flight, a gala dinner was arranged for the pilots, after which they were presented with the sacrificial bowls of sake, rice vodka, which they took with both hands. The kamikazes were escorted off solemnly as heroes who had already accomplished the feat. School children read poems to them. Friends and colleagues offered encouraging words. However, do not think that kamikazes were completely soulless, brainwashed by propaganda fanatics who were not afraid of anything. They also experienced fear and pain. Hayashi Ishizo, before his death, managed to write in his diary. It is easy to talk about death, sitting in safety and listening to the sayings of the sages. But when it gets close, you get so scared that you don't know if you can overcome it. There was another myth that the kamikaze had no right to return. In fact, the suicide pilots had a task not to die in any way, but to inflict as much damage on the enemy as possible. If the pilot did not meet the target or something went wrong with him on the plane, he could return to base. There were pilots who ran the target only the third or fourth time. Some kamikazes survived until the end of the war. For example, if a plane was shot down by an American fighter and the pilot fell into the sea, his ships or fishermen could pick him up. The first combat use of life shells occurred during the Battle of the Philippines, an island states in the Pacific Ocean, formerly dependent on the United States but captured by Japan in 1942. After defeat at the Battle of Midway in June 1942, Japan began to lose the initiative and by 1944 the US superiority in naval and air power had become overwhelming. 
the loss of the Philippines meant the final loss of Japanese strategic presence in the Pacific. And since the Japanese could no longer seriously contract the military power of the United States in the Philippines, the emphasis was placed on the use of kamikaze soldiers. The first kamikazes are considered to be Lieutenant Takeshi Kosei and a surgeon whose name remains unknown. On September 13, 1944, having attached two 100kg bombs on their planes, they took off from the island of Negros, Philippines. Both did not return, but the American fleet did not record any damage to ships that day. It is possible that both were shot down by naval anti-aircraft artillery or fighters. On October 15th, Rear Admiral Masafumi Arima personally led a detachment on a Mitsubishi bomber with the goal of ramming American ships. Three or four planes took off, but no one returned. The American aircraft carrier Franklin received serious damage, but it is unknown who exactly from the detachment managed to reach the target. The next attack by a detachment of kamikaze pilots was carried out on October 21, 1945, during one of the largest naval battles during World War II in Leyte Gulf and the simultaneous landing of American troops on the island Leyte. The plane with a pilot whose name remains unknown crashed into the flagship of the Australian fleet, the heavy cruiser Australia. The wreckage of the plane was scattered throughout the cruiser, killing 30 crew members along with the ship's commander. However, the ship, one might say, was luckily that time, since the bomb did not explode. Four days later, another kamikaze plane crashed into the Australia. This time the ship was seriously damaged and was towed away for repairs. On October 25, 1944, a kamikaze squad under the command of Yoki Seki attacked an American fleet carrier force located in the eastern part of Leyte Gulf. The first Japanese fighter Zero hit the stern of the aircraft carrier Senti. The explosion caused a fire, killing 16 crew members. The fire was extinguished, but the aircraft carrier was disabled for some time. A few minutes after the attack on the Senti, another kamikaze crashed the deck of the aircraft carrier Sione, also putting it out of action. The aircraft carrier St. Lou was hit by the two Japanese aircraft, causing the detonation of the arsenal. As a result, the ship was torn into pieces, killing 114 crew members. In total, in the attack, the Japanese used 17 aircraft, disabled 16 aircraft carriers and sank one. This was perhaps the most impressive success of Japanese kamikaze units during the entire war. On October 29, the aircraft carrier Franklin was again damaged by kamikaze strikes. 33 aircraft were destroyed, 56 sailors were killed, and the aircraft carrier Bello Wood, 92 sailors were killed, 44 were wounded. After the war, the American press tried not to cover this topic too much. At that time, it was customary not to emphasize the fact that the Japanese use of kamikazes had some influence on the course of the war. However, statistics suggest otherwise. The US Army even developed special instructions for fighting kamikaze. In addition, Japanese planes had a great negative psychological impact on the crews of American, Australian, British ships and transport vessels. By the way, the role of kamikaze in the Japanese army was not performed only by pilots. There were also kamikaze submarines. Specially equipped heavy torpedoes had small cabins with the rudders. After the torpedo was fired from the submarine or dropped from the ship, the task of the kamikaze sitting in them was to ensure that the torpedo was launched onto the enemy ship. However, this was not always possible either. Kamikazes were also used on land, for example, in tank battles. Japanese tanks were significantly inferior to American ones in armor and weapons. Therefore, the Japanese filled their tanks with explosives and went to ram the American tank. They could use any other equipment, for example, a car. A kind of vehicular suicide in Japanese design. By the end of the war, Japan had trained 2,525 kamikaze pilots. Another 1,387 kamikazes operated on land. According to Japanese data, 81 ships were sunk and 195 damaged. According to the Americans, kamikazes sank 34 ships and damaged 288. Independent sources lean towards 60-70 ships sunk and 250 damaged. Some researchers believe that kamikazes were one of the reasons that tipped the scales in favor of the use of the atomic bombs. Be that as it may, the use of suicide bombers, sending Japanese youth to conscious death, did not save the regime of the Japanese militaries from collapse. The Japanese military turned out to be merciless not only in relation to other people, but also in relation to their own nation, to their young people.